it's the tail end of another Vista. You guys are like, whoa, my caffeine. You know, I hang in there, hang in there. So what we're going to do in finishing off is to take a look at some stuff that I think is kind of cool and interesting. And you're my captive audience, and you're hanging out for the swag, so it's all good. But what, what I, what I want to focus in on, is, first of all, is, is the fun of being here. Uh, first of all, thank you to Karen and the team. Uh, you know, this, is, this has really been quite the conference. I, I knew you know, that I was going to enjoy this conference very early on. Let's see, that would be, say, right there. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I knew good things were happening here, and then, and then they brought that out, and I'm like, <laughs> let's see, how many conferences have I been to with candied bacon? Uh, there we go, right there, right? <laughs> awesome, all right? And, and then, and then, just to emphasize how much fun, like, the, the crowd is that shows up at this, oh, we had, we had the big karaoke gig. How much fun was that? How many of you were at karaoke? The rest of you, you missed, you totally missed. Matter of fact, I need to give a proper shout out. Uh, back, back in the back over there, Tim Owens, all right? And the epic rendition of Raise Your Glass. Everybody give him an I'm Not Worthy, yeah? That was awesome. So, so you know, I, I'm, I'm clued in. I'm clued into the fact that this is, this is a fun group, a group that knows each other, a group that's kind of exploring together. And I hope to give you some, uh, some, some thoughts that will be useful to you, helpful in some fashion. So let me give you a little more background about myself. I'm a native Texan. Uh, and that's Sam Houston, who of course is a native Virginian, right? There we go. Uh, and uh, I moved to Singapore at, at, a, at a very short age and with my, with my father and doing business stuff and that's a real hotel there, believe it or not. And then my mother brought us back to the South. Uh, she grew up in Magnolia, Arkansas, and that's where I, I grew up and went to high school and then went on to college in San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio is a wonderful place, a shrine of Texas liberty right there. Uh, after I graduated from college, I moved to Japan. I was there for a year and a half working with Japanese teachers of English. And then I went on to Perth in Western Australia where I studied French, Western, uh, sorry, <laughs> I studied French, Japanese, and African history. And they kept saying, you came here to do what? Uh, so then went to graduate school uh, in California and became, became a teacher and have loved the work with, uh, with kind of all heart and soul because it's, it's an awful lot of fun to be a part of, of a profession where what we do matters every single day. That's something special that we have that a lot of people don't. And so, you know, as you sit here and you're like, oh my goodness, I've been 48 hours with my head spinning. Well, you know, the, the key is what we bring to classrooms to inspire kids to see new possibilities in themselves, which is kind of the focus of what we're about to do. Uh, in 06, I became one of the, the first Google certified teachers. That's not a dig me so much as there, there's a lot of wonderful tools out there. I know you guys are excited about the opportunities you have around here. Uh, I believe you've got a Google Summit coming up in March. So those of you who are like, whoa, man, we're kicking in again, three months, you know, so get, get involved with that. There's lots of different possibilities out there. Uh, I also have worked with the Krauss Center for Innovation. Wonderful crowd in California. Uh, they are actually in their application period now for the 2014 cohort and you can apply. Uh, if you are accepted, then you will be a part of a group that meets together online for a year. You would have to go to the San Francisco Bay Area uh, in, for two weeks in July to be a part of a whole lot of fun learning. So if you can make that sacrifice professionally, you know, you, you, you're, you're very welcome to, to kind of give that a look. If you're curious about it, just contact me. And then finally, uh, I, run, I run a charity. The charity is called Next Vista for Learning. I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we go. But with that, let me invite you to take part in what we do uh, over the course of this session. If you have a, a device connected at this point and you want to open up to that chat, you can share ideas with other people in the room. Uh, if, if, we're, if we're enhancing what I present with all of the, the incredible talents and experiences and, and energy of the people uh, all across the room, we're doing a lot better for ourselves. I believe that strongly. And loads of free resources. So you know, if at this point in, in, the, in the conference you're thinking, I have to go back and explain why it was good for them to spend money on my coming here, there's your link right there. <laughs> Tons of stuff for all of your colleagues and students and, and all good. Now I'll give you the, uh, the link to all of these slides at the end as well. So you'll, if you stick around through the end, and if you stick around at the end, you might as well stick around because then there's swag. Um, you know, at that point, you can, you can get the link to all of these slides. All right, so why are we here? I believe we're here because of possibilities. I believe that there, uh, there has actually never been a better time to be a teacher. 
Now, I know how strange that sounds, but, you know, I mean, given the kind of weird political environment we're in in so many ways, the, the you know, the accountability, quote, unquote, you know, systems that, 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 we've, that have been inflicted upon us, and yet, and yet, as teachers, we are able to connect with our peers around the world in a way that breaks down the isolation that has been the cancer of the system for years and decades. And we can connect our kids using these same tools to possibilities that they'd never imagined for themselves. That's pretty darn cool. We're at a very cool time. And I think what we have is an opportunity to do this with free stuff. How many of you like free stuff? How many of you like free stuff? All right. See, I'm tempted to start the swag early. Look what I, look what I got for you guys today. There's a baked Lay's. I got a iced chocolate. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the real value of the free stuff is this. Not so much that our budgets may be anemic. That's, I mean, I understand that. But the real value of free stuff is that if we as teachers are using free stuff in the front of the classroom, the kids can go home and use those same tools without any barriers of cost. And so if there are lots and lots of really wonderfully powerful, cool, free tools out there, then by all means, you know, let's use them. Let's see what they can do for us. Let's see what we can do to inspire kids to think about their possibilities in new ways. Now, if we can inspire kids, then, then that's where success begins to happen because this is the critical piece. Now, now when we have inspiration, Right? If leaders are inspiring teachers, if teachers are inspiring each other, if teachers are inspiring their students, then you can get success, then you can get excellence in a way that, that will be reflected in these tests and everything, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. Right? But more to the point, we are, we are developing a professional atmosphere that we will enjoy being in. We need that. We need to go to school thinking, I'm glad I'm here. And, and that requires our putting forth you know, some interesting creative effort in ways that maybe we haven't before. Because sometimes those kids we really need to help are these kids right here. You know the kids I'm talking about. And, and some people would say, oh yeah, that's the one pulling down my test score. You know, I, I, I'm not into that kind of thinking. However, if we can inspire that kid, if we can get that kid to stop and say, you know, wait, maybe I can do this. Then, then, then we are moving in a direction that I think will be good for everybody. So in order to, to do this, and it's one thing to say, we should inspire. It's another thing to say, okay, well, how do you do it? How do you do it? How do we set that stage? And so I think we set the stage by first understanding where we're coming from. I'm going to show you a video. I, I do a lot of that. Uh, and, and the video that I'm going to show you is a video that explains, I think, a little bit about possibilities of technology in a very interesting way. So this is a video that was put out, I don't think, much more than about... Uh, six weeks ago or so by, by Google. So let's, let's take a look, see what you think. It was 26 years ago, and I was just about to turn five. We got to the train station and we boarded my train together. My brother just said, I'll stay here and I'll come back. And I just thought, well, you know, I might as well just go to sleep and then just wake me up. And when I wake up the next day, the whole carriage was empty on a runaway train, a ghost train taking me, I don't know where. I was adopted out to Australia to a Australian family. And mum had decorated my room with the map of India, which she put next to my bedside. I woke up every morning seeing that map, and hence it sort of kept the memories alive. People would say, You're trying to find a needle in a haystack, so you never find it. You know, I, I have flashes of the place that I used to go, the flashes of my family faces. There was the image of my mother sitting down with her legs crossed, just watching her cry. Life is just so hard. That was my treasure. And I was looking at Google Map, realised there's Google Earth as well, a world where you could zoom into. I started to have all these thoughts and what possibilities that this could do for me. I said to myself, well, you know, you've got all the photographic memories and landmarks where you're from and you know what the town looks like. This could be an application that you can use to find your way back. I thought well, I'll put a, a dot on Calcutta train station uh, in a radius line that you know you should be searching around this area. I sort of came across these train tracks and I started following it and I came to a, a train station which reflected the same image that was in my memories. Everything matched. I just thought, yeah, I know where I'm going, I'm just going to let the map that I have in my head to lead me and take me back to my hometown. I came to the doorstep of the house that I was born and walked around about 15 metres around the corner. There was three ladies standing outside adjacent to each other and the middle one 
stepped forward and I just thought, this is your mother. She came forward, she hugged me and, uh, and you know, we were there for about five minutes. She grabbed my hand and she took me to the house and, and got on the phone and she rang my sister and my brother to say that, you know, your brother has just all of a sudden appeared like a ghost. And then the family was reunited again. Everything's all good. They helped my mother out. She doesn't have to be slaving away. She can live the rest of her life in peace. It was a needle in a haystack, but the needle was there. Everything's there. Everything we have in the world is the tap of a button. But you've got to have the will and the determination to wanting it. Take, take just a minute with the person next to you. Talk about what you saw in that video. Go. Hi. So, how, how many of you had seen that, that video before? Several of you had. How, how, many of you, how many of you like you found that a very moving experience to watch that video? How many of you like, nobody told me to bring tissue to this thing? <laughs> Fair enough. Now, I, so sometimes I see teachers as, as that five-year-old boy at the train station, or, or more precisely, I, I see the passions that teachers bring to teaching when they first joined the profession as, as that five-year-old boy. I, I, I look at that and I think, you know, how do we get separated from those things? You know, what, what, are, what are the things that step in? Is it the committees we get on? What is it? You know what I mean? What is it that interrupts that, that love that we have for, for looking for something new? When we first start teaching, we'll take anything. Hey, you know, what you got? Show me. We're totally into it. And then after a few years, now we're kind of like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And, and, and we don't, you know, you don't need to be of advanced age for that to be the case. You can be a jaded teacher at 24 years old. The, the issue is how we look at what we do and we stop and we say, where is that passion for us? Can, can, we, can we get that passion back? And I believe we can. I believe we can because not only is it possible through the tools that we have you know, available to us, but because we desperately need to, to build those professional environments that, that we want. Now here's where teachers run into problems. These are the two biggies right here. Fear and stress, right? And, and let's take a look at, at, at each of these specifically. So with fear, one of them is the, the, the fear that technology will go wrong. Yeah? How many of you in working with technology, you've never once had anything go wrong? Anybody? <laughs> one, <laughs> right? Now, natural enough. The issue is how we react to it. Because, because that fear that something's going to go wrong kind of, kind of puts a barrier in our heads that, that just doesn't need to be there. And I may not be talking about you, I may be talking about colleagues, right? But, but, but it's real because we, we work together in, in ways that allow us to, to give a better message. But you can use that term technology and a perfectly normal teacher with the, with the hearing of the word can go, whoa, I'm freaking out now, right? <laughs> you know, natural enough. And yet, and yet, when things go wrong, we got an opportunity. We honestly do. Look my way for a minute. De-screen and look my way. Even if looking my way is a, a painful experience for you, but look my way. When something goes wrong, you've got one of the opportunities of the year. What do you mean? Well, imagine this. Okay, so you, you've set up a technology-infused lesson, right? And so the kids walk in, you know, you've got your computer ready. Kids, today, we're going to use technology. You know, and the kids are like, ooh, you know, you're like, here we go, you know. And they're like, nothing, you know? <laughs> it worked before class, you know, th this kind of thing. Now, what's happening is you're freaking out. Freaking out, not a good thing. But 
the problem is that some of our students, what they know about the adult world is that when things go wrong, people freak out. <laughs> That's what they know about adults. And, and you know, when they go home and, and people start to freak out, they run for cover. You know what I'm talking about. And consequently, if you are the teacher who's getting ready to do the lesson, you're like, guys, technology lesson, doesn't work. At that point you say, but not today. Let's go on to the next thing. <laughs> the lesson you just taught was that you can be an adult and not freak out when something goes wrong. That may be the most important lesson that one of your kids hears all year. You can be an adult and not freak out. That's interesting. Now the other issue is stress, and stress is mainly a function of time, isn't it? Well, oh, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time. Ah. You know, I mean, we hear this all the time. You want me to teach that? I don't have enough time to get through the curriculum as it is. You don't have enough time given the way you teach. Some of you are like, ooh, we're stepping on toes now, all right. <laughs> but more to the point, not, not every moment is of equal value, right? Not every learning minute is the same. There are times when we're teaching at 30 miles an hour, and there are times when we are, we are like 90 miles per hour and just passing everybody by. And those are the days that we all remember. And the question becomes, how do, we, how do we increase those minutes? How do those minutes become more a part of the work we do as teachers? Because once we've got that down, now things are, now things are going in a good direction. Because I, I think one of the things that, that you should know is that as teachers, we are exceptional at reinventing the wheel. We're really, really good at that. You know, I, I have to go home. I'm, I'm going to have a presentation for, you know, I'm teaching kids about haiku poetry tomorrow and I want to have a good PowerPoint ready to go. Okay, well, feel free. You know. So, you know, you go home and, and, and you know, like your dog comes up with a, the, with a, you know, leash in the mouth. Well, let's go walking. You know, you're like, no, no, I have to make the PowerPoint. You know, your significant other comes in. Hey, let's go out to eat. You know, maybe catch a movie. You're like, no, no, I have to make the PowerPoint. Friend calls up. I've got free tickets to the concert. No, I have to make the PowerPoint. <laughs> Now, never mind that 500 teachers around the world have made a PowerPoint about haiku in the last week and put it online for you to get, but you have to make your own. Does that make sense? Ooh. Have you ever seen this site? This site's amazing. Guys, get ready. If you don't know about this site, man, you've got to know about this site. This one right here. <laughs> this rocks, right? So yeah, check this out. You can go and you can find stuff. And you might be like, okay, you're being silly. Now wait, here's, here's, the, here's where people don't know how to use it. Okay, haiku poetry. Haiku poetry, I search, and you know, I come up with stuff, fine. But I didn't do it right. What? You didn't do it right. Really, really. Here's what you should have done. That's what you want to search on right there. Haiku, space, poetry, space, file type, colon, PPT. I'm not, a, I'm not a big Microsoft Office guy anymore, right? But I'll tell you, one of the great things about Microsoft Office is people have had it for years and years, and loads of people have created stuff, and it's out there on the internet, and you can use it. Therefore, why not? Or do you just need to create your own, right? This is awesome. Where do you go from here? Well, here are the search results. What do you do? You look right there at the green that tells you like what, what the particular site is. In this case, www.gifted.slp.k12.la.us. What do you learn from that? What is, what is LA? Louisiana, baby. All right, K-12, what's that? K-12 school, public school, right? SLP, you know. St. <laughs> Landry's Parish, but there you go. I mean, there's no reason you'd know that. You're like, St. Landry, you mean Tom Landry, the Cowboys? No, no, a different Landry. Although that's a St. Landry to some people, but nevertheless, <laughs> as you look at this, you can figure out all kinds of things, and then you download the PowerPoint and you see if it's worthwhile. Because there's three possibilities. It's really good, it's really bad, or it's somewhere in between. Two of these are really useful. The really good ones, clearly useful. They're somewhere in between, not so useful. The really bad ones, wildly useful. What do you mean? Well, guys, we've been studying haiku poetry. I'm about to show you a PowerPoint. It reeks, it's so bad. I want you to be able to tell me why. Here we go, right? Now, getting kids to understand that the quality of the digital media they're swimming in all the time, that's a really good move. And it gets them in, in, in that realm of understanding things at a much deeper level, hots, right? You know, so that, that's, that's where we're going with this. But what we want to deal is we want to deal with like, problems with academic success. So we've got loads of kids for whom fear and stress is an issue, and they're just not doing well. They're not doing well. So if, if that's the issue, what, what, is it that, what is it that we can do about that? Well, this is kind of a good place, I think, 
for us to, uh, to kind of move some technology in. Now, I'll say this to just start with. You want kids to do better in school? The first order is a business of do they get enough sleep, do they, uh, do they eat some breakfast, and do they like the teacher? I mean, that's actually the, the first order of business right there. If you, if you can satisfy you know, those things, you can, you know, that's great. But we do have some possibilities with technology that, that I think give us some, some great ways to go. One of the reasons kids have trouble in school, they take really bad notes. Really bad. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you can see this well, but like it, you know, all about wildfires. Then she gets down there, and, and, and right here, we're all going to die. <laughs> I'm guessing that wasn't one of the major pieces of learning from, you know, like the teacher's plan, right? That's a scream, you know, and, and, and I, I didn't make that up, right? I found it on, you know, just in a picture online. I'm like, that's hilarious. But anyway, more to the point, why do kids take bad notes? Okay, all right. Why shouldn't they? Let's turn that question around. Why shouldn't they take bad notes? Because if a kid walks into your class and you're trying to explain something, and the kid goes, well, that sounds like an important word. He's trying to write the word down. I'm not sure how to spell it, thinking about that a bit. And you, know, you said something else about it, and well, hmm, maybe I should add that. Oh, wait, that's another word. That's a different word. I better get that one down. Oh, here's the definition coming up. I'm going to write that down. I just missed the next few things you said because I'm trying to write that thing down. And then. Why do kids have trouble in school? If they're only listening to one out of every five words you say, they're going to have some difficulty. Consequently, can we, can we do things with technology that would address that? Well, let me just toss out like a kind of radical idea, see what you think. You guys have heard of Google Docs, Google Drive, right? What if everybody in the class was sharing one document called the class notes, and every day one person is like the principal notes taker and another person is the secondary notes taker, and you kind of move around, you're just switching around. And the principal note taker job is to take notes. The secondary is supposed to fill in gaps. Everybody else is just supposed to pay attention. They can take their own notes if they want, but they don't have to. And then at the end of class, the last 10 minutes of class, you, you project the notes onto the screen, and you say, all right, guys, let's take a look. What did we talk about today that didn't find, their way in, didn't find its way into the notes that we need to add there? You're reviewing the main points of the day through that. And everybody has good notes to study from because everybody shares the document. How many of you are like, ooh, I like that idea. I like that idea. All right? Now, I understand you know, that, you know, that, that requires some things. It would require, say, two computers in the room, a projector. Some people are like, that would be a rich school. I, 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 I get it. <laughs> But, but, I mean, there's just some interesting possibilities. There really are. Now, getting kids to think about what they can contribute is a part of this as well. I'm going to show you a video that came into one of our, one of our contests. My, my, little, my little charity, Next Vista for Learning, it's an online library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere, free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, all for a student audience, all screen content, all copyright friendly. Thank you very much. I'm trying to save the world from ignorance, one creative video at a time. Boom. All right, there we go. Now. <laughs> No, no, no. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, so coming back to it, right? Uh, here's here's a, one, a video that came in, uh, you know, one of our oh, classes. I'm going to show you how to tie your shoe. So first, you bring your shoelaces into the air, and tie them together. You put them like an X, and then you put your finger here, and you bring down the say that kid is? Five, six, is eight, okay, I have no idea, but um, you know, it's some, some age, right? Is it a boy or a girl? Boy, boy, I have no idea either. Uh, here's what I do know about this video. Whatever gender, age that kid may be, that's a kid who knows that he or she has something to give, right? That's, that's a kid who knows that, that he or she can teach something. That represents a level of confidence in their work that means it's going to be easier, easier to teach them the, the stuff you teach normally. You can teach the same way you always teach. If kids walk in confident that they can learn it, totally different ballgame than if they walk in going, uh, 
I no good at, you know, that kind of stuff. So, so consequently, we have these opportunities. We have like big opportunities to use the tools that are available to us now to, to make some really cool things happen. And this becomes, I mean, this becomes PR for the school right here. Because every teacher should be doing at least one project in the year that, be, that can become PR material for the school. I believe, I believe that every teacher does something cool. I mean, on, on every campus, every day, somebody's doing something cool, and every teacher does something cool at least once a year, maybe by accident, but I think it happens. <laughs> And consequently, we need to gather those stories in such a way that we can kind of work with it. You know, I, I just got to show you another video. I, the, 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 you know, I just love showing off their work because it shows kind of what kids can pull together. This is another kind All of... All over the world, things were happening. Video, video. People began to wonder, why? Why are all these things happening? Look in the papers. For some reason, lots of stuff has been happening. Why? <laughs> why, you ask? The cause. The cause of why these things are happening. We must find the cause. Ah, can you put that guy in for my chair? Someone took the cause. <laughs> All of the stuff that is happening in the world is because of the cause? That's it. The cause of why something happens and the effect is all the things that are happening. Clue words sometimes signal a cause and an effect. Consequently, you can act. They've got our like video of the year, you know, from 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 collaboration strand. Now, now we got tons of stuff. We, we got stuff with really clever pieces from high school students about you know uh, quadratic graphs, you know, and, and from all over the world. We get we get these wonderful videos from all over the world, and, and we got three collections. Oops, boop, ha. Huh. We got these three collections. The light bulb ones on the left. Those are the academic topics, right? So, so that'll be things like, okay, your, your history and culture videos, your, your performing arts videos. We have 110 careers videos in there as well. We love what kids and teachers are putting together and we love to be able to share that. The one in the middle, Global Views, is about different places around the world. How many videos do we have from Virginia? None yet. <laughs> I'll be talking to you, right? Now, then the ones on the right, seeing service. Those are about, that's about the joy and meaning that come from helping others. When we talk about like making our school a better place, you know, more successful, kids being confident, some of it comes from understanding something very basic about the world, which is that you are a better person when you understand the joy and meaning that comes from helping others. Now, we do an annual like service video contest that we're going to run again in the spring. And when we do, I intend, listen close now, I intend to give away a thousand dollars to charities highlighted by kids in videos telling about their work. I would love to put some of that money into charities here in Virginia. Please stay in touch with me so that, that we can make that happen. Stay in touch, we'll, 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 we'll get it done, right? But just stay in touch. Now, how do we get excellence out of these kids? Because if we're thinking about quality, right, quality is, is, is one of those things that you have to get kids out of the mindset of, you know, I'm just trying to get finished and into a, I really want to be proud of my work. How do you get there? Some of that comes from, from changing the audience, like we talked about in the digital media session today. Uh, for example, you know, one, of the, one of the points that I always make in a session like that is this. If you've expanded the audience for the student's work, it changes the dynamic in the room. Because if kids know that other kids are going to see their work, they want it to be good. And if you're the only one that sees the kid's work, then they want it to be good enough. And that difference is important. 
it's very important because you can help them get into a in kind of a frame of mind that means that they're going to they're going to care about this stuff. But we have to we have to kind of be willing to do kind of these activities that'll get them there. And there's a lot of ways to do it. Ways that, that don't take away from making sure you get them ready for their bubble tests and stuff like this. I understand. You, you can do both. But but sometimes it takes kind of an extra little extra little creative push on your part. You can do it. Now I, I normally, when I visit schools, I normally, like, I, I'll train a staff, you know, I'll come in, you know, I'll talk to them about possibilities with technology and professional, you know, perspectives, things like that. But sometimes, instead of talking to the teachers, I talk to the kids. So, I bring this slide up because one of the first times I did this was at a school in Milan, Italy. When they called me up and said, we want you to speak to our staff, sure, uh, where's your school? Milan, Italy. I'm like, twist my arm, you know, I, I think I can go. Now, I mean, you know, this beautiful place, actually, just in front of the school is the, is the church that, that houses the, the painting, uh, The Last Supper. If you ever go to Milan, you know, like, get, get your ticket weeks in advance for that. Otherwise, you're going to show up and they're going to be like, sorry, it's sold out. Wait, it's, you know, so don't want that. Then, you know, there's like a picture of the school. And then on the right is the best, the best cup of hot chocolate I've ever had in my life, right? I think what the guy did was just take like this really, really nice chocolate bar and melt it into a cup. <laughs> Man, you guys, you guys would appreciate that, right? <laughs> Candied bacon dipped in it, you know, something like that. <laughs> well, you know, so, so I had, I, I was meeting with kids all day long, and you know, like for 90 minutes at a time, kids would come in, and I'd work with about 50 of them, and we'd do different exercises related to creativity. How, how, how can they approach kind of school so that they're, they're, they're more excited to be there, they, you know, that they want to do some things that are really much more interesting, that they, that they have confidence in themselves academically in that front. So, you know, I had them do things like, T tell me their, their vision for the world 10 years from now. And while some of them you know, were kind of, you know, kind of dark, pessimistic things, there were some really optimistic things as well. So you know, you know, understanding the, you know, the problem of indifference, uh, people becoming more independent. Someone will discover a way not to die. Ooh, there's a, there's a topic for discussion right there. Kids, a writing prompt, here we go. Now, another thing that I did was I said, all right, here's two pictures. Got two pictures, got a picture on the left, got a picture on the right. And I asked them to come up with a story combining the two pictures. And I want you to do that with a person to your right or left right now. Make up a story that combines these two pictures. Go. Now, if we, were doing, if we were doing a workshop together, you know, one of the things I'd do is I'd have you like, explain to me what, what stories you came up with. But, but let me, for the sake of time, let me do this. How many of you just heard a really cool story from somebody next to you? How many of you are like, I just told you a cool story, why is your hand not up? <laughs> Fair enough. Now, now, when I did this with the kids in Italy, I mean, they were coming up with all kinds of cool stuff. You know, things like, okay, well, you see, you know, on the left, that's a, that's a train, and it's a magic train, and that guy in the middle, he really wants to go to that place where he grew up, which is the place on the right. I'm like, oh, that's cool, that's cool. You know, and, and going through the day, I was getting all of these, these different explanations. Right after lunch, I had a group in, you know, they, they were doing the same thing, and, and one, of the, one of the tables, you know, kid raised his hand when I get to this point, I said, yeah, tell me, tell me what your, your table came up with. This is what he said. He said, you see the picture on the left, that's the present. And the picture on the right, that's the past. And in the past, they dreamed of being able to travel on things like trains. And in the present, they dream of the peace and simplicity of the past. My reaction was something like, oh my god, that's cool! <laughs> wow, that's fantastic! Oh man, anybody else? <laughs> so I'm you know, totally blown away by how cool that was. 
it gets better. It gets better. Later in the day, I'm presenting to their teachers, you know, what have you been doing with our kids all day? You know, this kind of thing. And so I'm telling them, you know, taking them through the same things. They come up with some stories as well. And then I tell them that story about the past and present. And the teachers in that room responded to that story by bursting into applause to celebrate the creativity of their kids. How cool is that? And I was sitting there thinking, now let's see, the last time at, at the school where I last taught that we did that was, well, never. All right. <laughs> You know, and you know, and kind of law. Oh. And what is it? Is it? Is it? We're so into the right answer. Is that it? Are we so into the right answer that we're depriving ourselves of truly great answers? Is that where we are? If so, we need to fix it. We need to fix. There's nothing wrong with coming up with the right answer, but it shouldn't define what we do in ways that keep those moments of incredible insight from being a part of. A part of our experiences. We need those moments. We need those moments as teachers. Because I think you get into that space and then suddenly our work gets a heck of a lot more fun. So how do we get there? First, feedback. Feedback is important. You need feedback. There's a lot of ways you can get feedback. Now, when kids are creating things, they should get feedback from each other. Tell me, how can I make this better? And then, you know, they thank everybody that gives them advice, and they toss out the ones that they think are lame, and then they put to use the things that they think might be helpful. As teachers, we need to show the stuff that we're doing, that we're going to do, that we just did to our colleagues, and say, what do you think? How can I make this better? And you know, we also need to be asking the kids. Guys, we just did an activity in class. If we were to do it again, how should we change it so that it would be better for your learning? Ask them. Ask them. They have opinions. You might ask, and the first four responses you get, totally lame. But you say, thank you, thank you very much. And then the fifth one may change your professional life. I actually ask kids about once a year, I'd say, guys, I want to get better as a teacher. You know, here I am teaching you Japanese, you know, grammar and writing and all this kind of stuff, and I want to get better. I need to know how to get better. And I think you guys can tell me. So I, I invite you to, to let me know. You know, I, my, my ego's not in the game. You, you just, you let me know. One kid raised her hand in the back and looked at the desk. So she couldn't look at me when she's about to say this. Bit of a warning sign, huh? Right? <laughs> she looks at the desk and she says, Mr. Hurley, yeah, what you got? You always call on the same people. <laughs> but it's more convenient that way. They know the answers. <laughs> Not what I said, right? <laughs> I, I said, wow, wow. Okay, I needed to hear that. I'm glad you said it. I'll do better. And I did better. Why? Because I had said so in front of them. I had to. I had to. But man, it was, not only did I do a better job, but they knew that they could make a suggestion and I'd follow it. Now, that doesn't make me God's gift of teaching by any stretch. But, but it's a heck of a good message. And any of us can give it to the kids if we're willing. If we're willing. What's the power of, of that thing we had a minute ago with the two pictures? Not knowing what the best answers might be. We have to be comfortable with a certain level of uncertainty. That's okay. The world actually works that way. Let's embrace it. Let's embrace it in a way that actually makes our experiences better and the kids as well. We can do it. Because this is their question. Way too often, way too often, am I done yet? Is this enough? Will you take it? Will it get me, you know, some passing grade, please? And you're just, you're like twitching, you know. Mr. Hurley, you're twitching. It'll go away. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to take pride in your work. Bring it to me and don't ask that question. Even if you're thinking it, don't ask that question, right? Give me another question like this one. <coughs> Here's what I did. How can I make it better? If we'll ask that question of, of, of each other, if kids will ask that question of their peers, of us, of you know, their parents, they're going to be fine. I'm not worried about a kid that will ask this question and listen to the responses. That means that good things are going to happen. And that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be. How can, how can we find those moments of inspiration? Well, here's a way, right here. How many of you know about Dan Meyer, right? Some of you are like, oh yeah. He did a TED Talk called uh, Math Class Needs a Makeover. And let me be clear here, this is not just about math. I mean, if you're a math teacher, yeah, you got extra kind of, you know, kudos in, in this one. But, but this video 
is about what it means to spoon feed a kid so much that it saps all of the joy out of learning something, as in the textbooks we use. And, and how he would take textbook problems and strip stuff away left and right until it was just the core of something and leave him having to figure out all kinds of pieces. And, and the kinds of stuff he was able to accomplish in his classroom were amazing. Watch this together. You may not have time to have a book talk as a staff. Not, maybe not everybody has time you know, to go home, clean up, you know, help the children do this, that, and the other thing, and, and read a book. But I think everybody can watch a 10-minute video. I do. And then, and then talk about it. What do we learn? What do we learn together? We want that professional culture in our classes that can be enabled through technology and global possibilities in such a way that some really great things are happening. Anybody ever have days where, like, you know, you just think, man, mm, I could be doing something else. It would be a lot easier and I'd be making more money. Mm. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands because I see a lot of you like, I'm there, I'm there. Not right now. I like being here, but, you know. Here's another one. What is your eduwin.com? Remember, you're going to get these slides, by the way, just saying. Now, what is your eduwin takes advantage of Twitter. Twitter is a wonderful tool. How many of you are on Twitter? That'd be not enough, actually, even though there are a lot of hands up. What do you mean? What do you mean? Isn't Twitter that thing where people put out things that said, I just ate a cheese omelet, right? <laughs> Understand something about Twitter. If you're on Twitter and you see something come up in your stream that says, I just ate a cheese omelet, that's your fault. Don't follow that person. <laughs> follow somebody that says, I just found this fantastic research, you know, that was related to the stuff I teach at this NASA site that has all these resources. That's the stuff you follow, not the cheese sandwich people. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's an amazing tool. And you can stick these hashtags in. You know, hashtag, right? And these hashtags that, that tell, you know, something interesting if you're searching for it. If you search for eduwin, the hashtag eduwin on Twitter, some of you are like, whoosh, right, right now. If you do that, you're going to see all of these wonderful things that people found and experienced and all of this stuff. There's all kinds of great stuff there. And, you know, sometimes we need that. Because somebody just came along and says, so we have a problem with your kid in third period. I need you to fill out these forms in triplicate. And you're like, where's something sharp I can thrust into my school? <laughs> we all have those moments. And, and go to sites like this that bring this stuff up so that we can see it. The edge you wins. Hey, just had a kid come back. You know, I had, he graduated two years ago, but he said that the stuff that we did in my class was, just changed his life. Ed, you win. Let's share those moments. Let's do. Because we're in, you know, frankly, we're into not sharing. Because if you're sharing something good, then you're bragging. Oh, right? What a stupid way to do a school. Instead, every time something goes great, you know, we should all be waiting for those moments. Tell me what, what great things happened to your class today. Oh, that's awesome, man. I bet I could do that with you. What do you think? Man, share ideas on that front. That, that puts us in, in the kind of motion we need. Now, I'm, I'm beginning to, to run short of time, which, which I find tragic because I really enjoy standing up here listening to myself speak. <laughs> teacher. And, and so, so I want to I kind of get to a story that I think is important. You actually uh, have probably seen the guy uh, on, on the third one from the left. So one, two, three, that guy. You know, you've probably seen him before. You might say, I, I don't recognize him. I kind of think you've seen him. What do you mean? Do you remember when YouTube kind of hit it big? This was like 05, 06, you know, kind of in there. And a number of videos went viral at that time. Let me give you some background. That guy graduates from college in like 98, 99. And he gets a job programming computer games. His dream job. So he's there, he's like spending all his days working on games. He's like, how much better could my life be? This is awesome. Two or three years into it, he's like, ah, you know, maybe there's more to life than this. And he's at a conference in Australia on game something or other. And, and he learns that a lot of Australians will spend a year between, say, high school and college or college and work called the gap year and just travel around the world. He says, well, you know, that sounds kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that. So he and a friend decide to do that. He quits, quits his job. They start traveling around the world. And they're in Vietnam. And he's standing in front of this big famous thing, whatever it was. And his friend says, hey, do that stupid dance you do. And he says, all right. So he's doing this, right? And, and, and the guy films it. And as they go around the world, he gets, he gets this guy doing this kind of strange dance in front of things around the world. 
Now, that was for a blog he was writing at the time, but when YouTube comes out, they put the video on YouTube and bam, it goes viral. Some of you are like, oh, okay, yeah, I do recall that video. Weird dude, you know, dancing in a lot of places, fine. Now, after that happened, a company called, contacted him and said, we're gonna pay you to travel around the world. <laughs> How much better could my life be? <laughs> I'm being paid to travel around the world and do a stupid dance in front of things. Awesome. After a few years of this, he begins to wonder if you know there's like more to life. And he had a significant other kind of note that that what people really love in these videos is, is like when there are other people dancing with him. And so last year, last year they, they put a new video out, and that video is uh, is one I'm going to show you now because I think it's a really interesting one for thinking about the connection between vision and action. Here we go. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Isn't that something special? Yes. So, you know, I look at a video like that and I think about all the good that we can do individually in our classrooms and then it reminds me what's possible when we're working together, yeah? It, it, it's such an interesting world we live in. There are these ideas that we have that can find expression. We'll pay you to travel around the world. Whoa, what, you know. There are all kinds of interesting possibilities. Maybe not quite that dramatic, but still. I think that we can, we can make our classrooms those kinds of spaces where, where kids think, let's try it, let's do it, let's, let's do it. And then, and then you build that environment where, you know, everything starts working a little more easily, a little more comfortably, a little more friendly fashion, a little more effectively, a little more efficiently. That's good stuff. Now he let this, this video out there under a Creative Commons license. So I mean, I was free to use it, but I contacted him anyway, just to say, hey, you know, I, I work with a load of teachers kind of all over the place. I'd love to use your video. Uh, you know, do you mind, you know, just kind of giving me explicit permission for that? He wrote back, he wrote back. What did his message say? It said this. Sure, go ahead. That was it, everything. <laughs> But I'm like, that's cool. He wrote back. How much fun is that? This is a great time. It's a great time. And I think that it's worth going back over some of the suggestions that I made. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of recap some things here. I want to tell you this. I think new technologies represent opportunities to expand students' worlds. I believe that it's okay to explore new and wonderful resources, especially when it doesn't cost you anything. I think it's okay when things don't work out as long as you don't freak out. <laughs> Taking on something new is okay, especially when it saves you time. Using what others have done is okay when you cite your sources. It's okay to talk about successes and failures when you welcome feedback. Asking open-ended questions is okay when you're comfortable with uncertainty. And you know, it's okay to dance when you know that what you do what you do matters every single day. Stay in touch with me. There's my email address at the top right there. Got my Twitter handle up there. The videos, there's 1,200 videos from teachers and kids around the world. I'd love for you to take a look at it. Get some kids to make a few, to contribute to them. We'll give you feedback, right? Love doing that. All right. The merit program that I mentioned, is that's the tiny URL to get to that. Uh, there are loads of free resources. Uh, at the bottom, you can see the link to the slides, right? So all of these slides, you know, follow that link and you'll, you'll have all of these slides as well. If you can't find it, just email me. I'll send you the link, no problem. The next to last one is the newsletter. I hope that before you leave today, you'll go to that link, nextvista.org slash newsletter. Because I send out stuff once a month. I don't share all this information with scummy, spammy people or anything like that, right? And, and I've got in it loads of free resources, stuff that I think is inspiring in some fashion, and new videos that, that teachers and, and students have given us that we've added to the website. And I hope that, that I'll, I'll be in touch with you. If there's any way I can help you with what you're doing at your school, you let me know. I'd love to, I'd love to be a part of it. I'd love to work with you on some videos, some service videos, get some donations you know, to, to causes in your area. Now, I finished that newsletter the same way every month, and I'm going to finish this presentation with that line now. May you inspire and be inspired daily. Thank you so much for having me at your conference.